and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras, here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. We are now hearing unconfirmed reports from Arab media sources saying that Israeli jets have just struck a military target in Syria just outside of Damascus. Witnesses say they heard explosions coming from a warehouse nearby, a well-known Hezbollah stronghold. The IDF as policy does not comment on alleged military strikes like these. But if true, these airstrikes would have very interesting timing. Mere days ago, Russian leaders publicly announced that only Syrian forces should have a presence in the country's southern region, where Israel believes thousands of Iranian forces have currently entrenched. This change in policy is seen as a big win for Israeli leaders. Prime Minister Netanyahu has repeatedly pushed Putin to keep Iran off Israel's doorstep by extending the buffer zone. Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman is also in Moscow this very moment lobbying for the same. Russia is most likely hoping to defuse a very volatile situation on the Israel-Syria border. Earlier this month, Iran fired dozens of missiles at Israeli military sites in the Golan, the largest ever Iranian attack from the region. The Israeli counterstrike that followed delivered a pummeling blow to Iranian forces in the region as well, though. But with the fate of the JCPOA nuclear deal with Iran now in limbo, this is a problem that may be quite long term. Following the most intense exchange of fire between Israel and Palestinian terror cells in Gaza since the 2014 war, things have returned to a relative calm. Both Israel and Hamas have upheld the ceasefire deal reached yesterday, but only after terrorists launched at least 100 missiles from the Gaza Strip into Israeli territory. The barrages were mostly deflected by Israel's Iron Dome defense system, but a few direct hits in Israeli communities resulted in some moderate injuries and some very close calls. In response, Israeli Defense Forces launched a pummeling series of airstrikes across dozens of Hamas targets throughout the Strip. Army officials say they delivered one of the worst blows to Hamas in many years. Prime Minister Netanyahu has promised a swift and brutal retaliation if the ceasefire deal is broken as well. Meanwhile, though most of the world's leaders stood by Israel during these attacks, the United Nations Security Council failed to pass a resolution condemning Hamas for the violence. Kuwait stepped in last minute to block the vote, but leaders from France, Germany, and the United States, including President Donald Trump himself, publicly sided with Israel over the events of the last 48 hours. Israel has often accused the international community of bias when it comes to conflicts like these, but this time it may be worth noting that the tides seem to have changed, and now the world is finally pointing its fingers directly at Hamas. Yesterday, the Israeli government advanced construction plans for nearly 2,000 new Jewish homes throughout the West Bank. Nearly half of these homes would be built outside of current settlement blocks in areas that some argue is Palestinian-owned territory. This decision is sure to ignite international debate, but the White House has already stepped in and apparently asked Israel to tap the brakes. According to the official statement, President Trump has expressed his concerns to the Israeli government regarding how settlement growth impacts peace with the Palestinians. The Trump administration is expected to present its peace plan next month after the Muslim holiday Ramadan concludes. Reading between the lines here, many believe Trump has asked Netanyahu to scale down settlement growth in order to give his American peace effort a chance. The growth of Jewish settlements in land that Palestinians hope to make a future Palestinian state remains one of the biggest obstacles in the peace process. Religious and right-wing Israelis say this land historically and biblically belongs to the Jews, but international law and in some cases Israeli law often does not recognize these settlements as legal. Just yesterday, Israel's own high court walked back a prior ruling on this matter, effectively unwinding the state's position on the seizure of Palestinian land for settler use. Arkady Babchenko, the Ukrainian journalist who faked his own death this week, apparently spent some of his time in Israel during his time after fleeing Russia. Babchenko has been a longtime outspoken critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin, and after fleeing Russia over death threats, Babchenko apparently used his maternal Jewish roots to flee first to the Czech Republic and then Israel, and finally to Ukraine in July 2017. But his criticisms against the Russian government didn't end after moving to Kiev, leading to the death threats only worsening. So in a ruse orchestrated with the Ukrainian government and designed to thwart an actual assassination attempt, Babchenko was reportedly fatally shot Tuesday night and found by his wife only to die en route to the hospital. Thankfully for him and his many supporters, though, he was miraculously resurrected on live television just 24 hours later to a crowd of applauding media teams. It's anyone's guess now what will happen next. Following the escalation of violence and tensions between Israel and Gaza, Indonesia has reportedly banned Israelis from entering their country. In response, the Israeli Foreign Affairs Ministry has responded in kind, rescinding all tourist visas from Indonesians coming to Israel. 
Though the two countries don't have any diplomatic ties at the moment, the Southeast Asian and majority Muslim country of Indonesia was reportedly set to start turning things around by first starting to grant tourist visas for Israelis. Indonesians, on the other hand, have been coming to Israel in droves for years under special visa conditions. Over 30,000 Indonesian tourists visited Israel in 2013 alone, for example, and that number has been steadily rising. But not anymore, at least not until things calm down along the Gaza border. It seems any signs of warming ties with Indonesia will be put on hold. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. <laughs>